in honor of the new year and to say thank you for supporting my channel, I've put together a best of 2022 video just for you. Have a safe and healthy new year, my friends. Let's dive right in. Hey, Stewie. Oh, hey, Bri. Guess who woke up to a red dawn? <laughs> I'm assuming the red dawn is just referring to blood. I'm having my period. It's like the shining elevator down there. My 21st century box has been conquered by Eric the Very Red. Yeah, this is getting dangerously close to a will and grace now. But if you're bleeding down there, it's clearly because you hurt yourself. I like that Brian is bringing up the fact that if he's having bleeding down there, there's something else going on. You're gone. What? I'll kill you again in hell, my friend. <laughs> He missed him with a gunshot and he got him with a knife. I mean, cool, it's a game, obviously. We got these rusty knives that can cause bacterial infections and then you're gonna potentially die from an infection that you don't have treatment for. <gasps> oh my gosh, that is what? so crazy. I can see your teeth. What? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I would have the same that reaction. Is insane. We have people who have feeding tubes into their stomach. And if you take that tube out, that hole seals up really fast because the body heals that well. So same idea here. The fact that it's still an open spot means something in the way to prevent it from closing. Both oh no! It's so Come on. To see the toothbrush like That's that. just excessive. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at her. She's so sweet, she's giving me cavities. <laughs> Good writing. Cavities due to poor dentition. Some people have just strong enamel versus weak enamel. And some people don't brush or clean or they're eating a lot of sugary things. The other thing you have to think about, potato chips. Potato oh. chips! Starch breaks down into sugar and they just sit in your teeth if you don't brush it out. Um, dude, I, I think you had a little accident. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is so funny. I don't know why this guy has a bazooka. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, explosion right in front of you. I don't think there's much surviving. You're probably gonna be in more pieces than what that depicts. Just sit back and relax. We're just gonna shine a few lights in your eyeballs. <laughs> Most of the time, people get seizures from either not taking their seizure medications, stress, lack of sleep, alcohol, different things that would actually just stress the body. Oh man, I thought you'd be <laughs> flopping all over the floor by now. Well, I guess we could hit you in the head with this frying pan and see what happens. <laughs> I love it. When you walk into a patient's room and see a million family members. <laughs> Yes, that's actually very accurate. Well, go see Dr. Hartman. I don't want to do that. I'm embarrassed. This shouldn't embarrass you. The size should embarrass you. <laughs> oh my gosh. We all come in different shapes and sizes. The average is a lot smaller than everybody thinks, and most people are actually normal size, so don't worry about it. How about now? Is this doing anything for you? No. What? Not appropriate. <laughs> You're not funny! You're Why not funny! You're not funny! Put it on your hair! The oils in the avocado and the guacamole there is probably not bad for your hair. It's probably actually good giving you some nutrients. But what well, about the guacamole? guacamole? Well, you see, Doc, the problem is obesity runs in my family. Doctor, no, the problem is no one runs in your family. <laughs> The anatomy looks pretty good. Major arteries run with major veins as well as the nerve. Not every single vessel in the body that way, but majority of them. Oh, it's so good, the blood splatter. I love it, it's like crazy. No, it would go. You could have arterial bleeding and venous bleeding. So your artery blood's gonna be bright, bright red because it's oxygenated blood. And the venous blood is gonna be a little bit darker <laughs> uh, it's no use. It just doesn't work out. Honey, you've been in here for hours. Oh, I'm sorry for laughing so much. If you're pushing so hard that you're sweating, you're going to increase the risk of a rectal prolapse, internal or external hemorrhoids. This can cause anal fissures. You need to adjust your diet, high fiber diet, a lot of water. Make sure you're moving around. Make sure that you don't end up in this circumstance. And my burrito is ready. <laughs> <laughs> nope, OSHA has some rules about eating food around patient patient care. Can't do that. 
Whoa! Freaking pizza pie cut out of the face. Holy cow. Just laying on the ground there. Can you just put that back in? Nope. Once that I'm out of that trauma, you'll be altered for a very short period of time and then you'll be out cold. I'm here with professional bowler Missy Parkin and this is the cup test with a bowling ball. Not a good idea. Who loves bowling? I'll go bowling anytime. You let me know time and place, I'll be there. I will let you know that I do use the heaviest ball you're allowed to use. Oh. Was that 16 pounds? Bowling ball. I don't know if this is the right puck, dude. It's got it really, go. yeah, it's right. It's got really bad edges. This guy, he's so worried about his cup because of the edges. It's just like a plastic casing, but it's supposed to be kind of high up in the groin itself. So it has an area to brace itself against. This is going to hurt. No matter what, it's still going to hurt. See, what do you think of Aaron's chances here? I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely hit that. So oh, please just hit him, Missy. Just okay. hit him. Oh, oh man. No, it's going to hurt. Also the inner oh, thigh. God. I don't know what to do. Even if she hits the cup and it goes right to the perineum down in the middle, that's going to cause compression and pain. Ah! Oh! oh, that was on the leg. <laughs> oh! oh, that was like, no matter what, it's going to go right in there. All of us out there that have testicles, we've all been hit once or twice in our lives. You get pain into your abdomen. Our testicles were actually formed inside of our abdomen. And then as we were developing and growing, they moved their way down and out into the scrotum out of our body. Today, we're going to do a little furniture shopping. Oh, that's definitely Johnny Knoxville. That's his uh, grandpa character. <laughs> A lot of times you can get whiplash injury just from getting shot up. Typically major traumas we have to worry about anytime that somebody falls greater than three times their own height. So that was pretty close. Well, hopefully he just landed on another couch. This is literally my second day in the job. <laughs> I fell off. You tried to take oh. advantage of a defenseless old man. I hope he's wearing a cop or he's padding and then that was like in the scenario because getting kicked in the gonads causes a significant amount of abdominal pain. The reason why you actually get pain that goes up into your stomach is because that's where they originated from. It is horrible. It's a vacuum. What are you doing? Cleaning up? Uh, I'm going to put it on my dick to make it bigger. Oh my gosh. Please do not do this. Don't do this. There are many times that I've seen people come in with different devices stuck their penis. You can lose your penis. It could fall off. It could turn black and die and just fall off. Most of the time, the individual thinks that their penis is too small when in reality, it's just fine. Oh, no, 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 bad idea, bad idea. Take it off, turn it off. My balls. Oh, my balls. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is horrible. Bad idea. You're going to cause potential ischemia to the tissue, decrease blood flow. He even said that his balls got sucked inside. There's all that suction pressure decreasing enough blood flow to the area that long-term injuries could occur. I can honestly say I've never seen somebody come into the emergency department with a vacuum hose stuck to their penis. Clear! Oh my God. <laughs> They're randomly putting all these paddles on this patient. Typically, it's the flank on the left and right upper. And the reason why you do that is you're trying to get a conductive force between those two and your heart's in the middle. Holy shit, it actually worked. <laughs> Sometimes you do something in the emergency department and you're shocked that it works. Sometimes doing MacGyver things or you're following the algorithms. That's why we always try and we always work hard in the emergency department no matter if we feel that it's futile in certain situations. He appears to be in stable condition, but he'll need surgery. Now, what insurance provider do you freaks have? <laughs> His insurance. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're trying to kill him. That is funny. I'm just gonna take him off Sweet. as soon as I leave. That's why we have the little stapler. Ow! What? <laughs> well, we actually will use staples sometimes to the scalp for laceration repairs, but typically we won't use it on the face. We don't need to staple and put big holes in it, which could leave scars. No! No! <laughs> And the way that it's hanging there, it's definitely double bones. That means the radius as well as the ulna are fractured. It resets it, which we actually do in the emergency department. But typically after you reset it, you need to put a splint on it because it's still floppy. It's not attached anymore. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Hey, bruh. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh, there's glass in my eye. Oh, <laughs> son of a... 
<laughs> Do not take any baseball bats to anybody's skull. A skull fractures, intracranial bleeding, epidural hematomas, subdural hematomas, death. A baseball bat is for hitting baseballs. Definitely see eye injuries at the hospital. Most of the time, foreign bodies get in there. Usually people are either welding or using something small, metal-wise, and a piece of metal actually goes in the eye. An incision here. <laughs> <laughs> we got heart, we got weird blood coming out. Oh my gosh, now I'm hungry. Uh oh. It's not the chairs that are comfortable, it's it's my ass. <laughs> I have the most comfortable <laughs> in the world. Well, it brings up an interesting point. It's very important to have a good chair because of like back support and comfortability. Good, comfortable chair where the pressure is actually distributed kind of throughout your tuchus will be very important. Oh, no. What is he doing? This is danger, keep away, keep away. His snowblower had been coughing up exhaust for the last two hours. Oh, oh carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> Can I look back? Yeah, Can yeah, you can look back. That is awesome and so messed up at the same time. She can't handle the bloody Honestly, bit I don't of its know face. I'm Nathaniel. I'm 27 years old and I'm in a serious relationship with my car. Oh. What? So a serious relationship with his car to where he's physically making out with it. I've heard of car lovers, but I guess this puts a whole nother twist on that. Uh-oh. Ryan! <laughs> yeah! Oh my god. <laughs> he has such a massive head that the sound of his head hitting the stairs is actually a really good job. It's gotta be from wearing that damn brace all the time. Your neck must have atrophied so much it can no longer support your head. <laughs> there you go. We do tell people with the soft cervical collars not to put those on because you can actually cause muscle stiffness and potential atrophy. Oh no, oh no. Oh, it's out. Oh, what? Oh my. <laughs> Look, you see like piece of the eye, you got the blood vessels, beautiful. Really impressive. I mean, I'm sorry, this facial trauma. Ow, ow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. What do you think happened to my voice, Doc? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is great. It doesn't happen that way. Your vocal cords don't change tone because you got kicked in the balls. You might not want to speak because you hurt, but it doesn't have any effect. Peter, I'm afraid you suffered something called pedalton balls. <laughs> pedalton balls. I want to play a game. It's right before your eyes. Oh no. He put the key behind his eye. I want to know how he's got surgical skills to be able to do that. There's a lot of muscles in the way of that. How is it actually just resting behind there? We don't have that much room and extra pockets to put things. Oh, don't pull the device. Oh my gosh, he pulled the, the no, but nothing works well out of aggression. Until you learn to master your rage, your rage will become your master. Oh my gosh, he's got a scalpel. It looks like it's either a 15 or a 10 blade. It's so hard to do. My one suggestion would not be to cut through your cornea because the cornea is the highly sensitive area of the eye, which is basically the clear coating over top of your iris and your pupil. Super painful if you touch it. So I'd go to the white area where there's less nerves. No, 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 you couldn't do it. Oh man. That's a shame. Could you do it? You can injure the eyeball itself, get all the fluid out, squish it, move it out of the way. The other thing you could potentially do, cut here at the side, but the issue ends up being you have all the muscles and the optic nerve that are keeping the eye in place. Do those have to be cut? First player to drop the other participant secures the money for the team, whilst the loser does more shots. Oh, oh. He's screaming bloody you know what because of the amount of pain. You're popping blood vessels, you're hitting the skin, you have nerves to the skin, you have nerves to the underlying tissue. So it's gonna cause a lot of pain and it's gonna break a lot of capillaries and blood vessels as well as a hematoma. A hematoma is a collection of blood underneath, like a pocket versus the ecchymosis is just the integration of broken blood vessels within the tissue itself. Oh, oh my gosh. Quiet, bro, it's too late! It's too late. <laughs> <laughs>
That is why I don't do bungee jumping. I'm kidding about the bungee jumping. They're very safe. They do a lot of testing. If you want to do that, enjoy. Go ahead. Just make sure they have a good safety profile and all their certifications and pass all their safety tests. But ouch. Ouch. You got to be careful. I'm surprised he actually didn't fall forward. And it was interesting because I think the other guy knew it might snap because he wasn't running as hard. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the headbutt in that area when somebody gets a fracture up here we call this a Lafort fracture and there's different levels of it having to do with the injury and how much fracture of the bone there is and depending on where it is oh i don't think the glass would break that easily that's why it's really good to have these safety devices in cars that can pop a window really easy in case you're ever in a life-threatening event where you need to get out of the car Doctor, just checking for cancer. I am so out of touch with weird sexual innuendo. I'm Dr. Richard Shea, here to tell you about my exciting new drug-free treatment for children with attention deficit disorder. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What a good commercial. You got the just kids just bouncing off the wall. But my question to you is, aren't kids just bouncing off the wall anyway to begin with? Sometimes are we actually putting children on these medications maybe a little bit premature? This treatment is fast and effective and doesn't use harmful drugs. Watch closely as I apply treatment to the first child. Sit down and study! <laughs> you hear of alternative therapies. Some are good, but this one... Sit down and study! And I'm not too sure is quite appropriate. Yes, there are medications out there that we use to help focus individuals, calm their brain down a little bit, and should be used potentially as an, an aid and maybe a band-aid, but not maybe something that should be used permanently. <laughs> what, is, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. All the skin and the soft tissue are going to stay intact. It's going to be really hard to rip through that by just spinning it. My turn. Oh, that guy is a bad. Holy cow, he just mustered up some sort of strength. They are flying around this world. If an individual falls greater than three times a normal individual's height, then we consider that a major trauma and we are concerned with multiple systems that could be injured, fractures, dislocations, hematomas, contusions, ruptured organs, anything disastrous lying underneath the skin, the tissue, and underneath the bones. Okay. Okay. You're tough, you're smart, <laughs> you are charming, but you are still no match for me! Look, a bald eagle with a mustache! Ah! <laughs> 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 so, you know, why is it not coming out? It could be embedded into the bone if it's that sharp and deep, or it could have like barbs on the underside, so it's actually preventing it from coming out. Come on, Kratos. Whoa, we dropped. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of blood that's there could be from the mouth, could be from the nose. There are some major blood vessels on your face that if you do lacerate will bleed a lot. But in general, any big laceration to your face will bleed a lot more just because the face is so highly vascularized. Oh, well, Doc, I figured if Charmise and I are going to live as man and wife, I ought to get her checked out. Of course. What? This is a very inappropriate, weird situation. You actually wouldn't put the patient in stirrups like this and most likely they're facing the door. So if somebody accidentally walked in, they're just, everybody sees everything. You wouldn't do that, it'd actually be turned around. They're in what's called the stirrups. The stirrups basically change the angle of the pelvis. The reason why you actually have the angle of the pelvis change is because of the uterus, the, the organ that you're looking at. You're looking for the cervix, you're trying to feel the, the uterus as well as the ovaries on each side. Charmies, when's the last time you had a pelvic exam? When was the Missouri Compromise? <laughs> yep, there are definitely uh, scheduled times of when somebody should be getting public exams. The, the frequency just depends on your activity and age. But in the emergency department, we do them emergently. Typically, if somebody's having a significant amount of vaginal bleeding, if there's vaginal discharge um, during pregnancies, or if there's any pain or injuries down in that area as well, we will do public exams. Uh, I think 1821. Then I've never had a pelvic exam. What? All right, I'm going in. If I tug on the rope twice, that means pull me out. <laughs> the rope is inappropriate, but he's putting on a hat that has a light on it. It's quite helpful in certain situations. God, who are the pigs who just throw their empty beer cans down here? <laughs>
If you're having any procedure where you're going to get that significantly close, you should be gowned up wearing gloves, depending on the sterility of the situation that you need. Does it need to be clean versus sterile? Oh, Jason Voorhees in the building. <gasps> Okay, wait a minute. A lot of times people smash their face on the ground or a wall and their skin just splits right open. The trauma of the tissue hitting a hard surface actually causes it to break and split apart. Then obviously you're worried about skull fractures and getting concussions and cause some bruising. The first things I think about whiplash injuries. I think I got whiplash. Then we actually see people who get their hair ripped out. I've never seen somebody manually get their hair pulled out as well as the scalp. Typically there's some other trauma to where the hair then would lift off. I was drowning here. Oh, what is that? Liquid nitrogen, holy cow, that was super cool. That could actually happen. You don't know it could happen. It definitely does not make the sound of shattered glass. People actually do come to the hospital with traumatic injuries to their face and you can just put a tube right in there and you can oxygenate the person and obviously it's gonna need multiple reconstructive surgeries. Oh, look at it. Oh, look, this is just, just a table of like joy for just this type of person. None of these are potentially medical tools that I would use in the emergency department, except for maybe there's this one little one. It almost looks like an ear curtage, basically where we would take earwax out of someone's ear. Jab it right into the patient's face. Doctor, I think it's supposed to be operating on heart. <laughs> Shut up, nurse! <laughs> If I, as a physician, ever yelled at a nurse that way, I would lose my job and I wouldn't get anything done. The nurses pretty much run the show. They're a lot more hands-on than the doctors are. Cool, <laughs> I'm Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> <laughs> and there are different types of masks. So sometimes people just tolerate the ones over the nose versus some have to go nose and mouth. Has to depend on how you're sleeping and what's comfortable for your face. Ah, I'm bleeding. Ah, I'm bleeding. Make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> if you get punched in the nose and you start bleeding, you just pinch the front of your nose and lean forward. If you pinch it and lean back, their blood could actually still go back into the posterior pharynx down the back of your throat. You swallow it and then you're going to get nauseous and potentially vomit. Get the chop his finger off. The right. Watch that. Oh, he ah! Ah! Even the noise. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Oh, man. If this does happen, hold pressure right to the end, find the lost digit, wrap it in the wet paper towel, then maybe put it in a bag of ice. 